All right, guys. Well, here we go. It's um, it's Thursday morning. It's WebEx time, and uh, I decided to do something today that um, if you saw in the email. What do you mean Facebook's over? I just got here. I know for many of you, you're just beginning to create Facebook pages. You're starting an adventure. Maybe you haven't started it. You're thinking about it, or you're thinking of doing it a little differently. Well. Um, Depending on whose book you read out there or whose blog or what you follow, uh, many people are waiting for Facebook to just kind of go away. And maybe that's you. That you know, I didn't want to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm waiting for it to go away, and finally it's gone. Well, I don't know if that's true or not. But um, I'm going to share with you a little information that I learned uh, last evening while I was reading, which prompted me to... to um, focus on this one today, and you're looking at it right now on my screen, and that is, uh, you're looking at my Twitter homepage and some of the tweets that I follow, and here's one that I sent out yesterday to, um, I retweeted a little chart, and uh, I'm going to show you this has to do with Facebook and how Facebook was performing in the fourth quarter of 2013. This comes to you from the Wall Street Journal, so pretty credible uh, source for you in their money beat section. So Facebook's quarterly results in five charts. So I don't know if you like Facebook, don't like Facebook, hope it would go away, but um, here's the reality check for you guys. Facebook has been around now. Uh, we know that it's grown to huge numbers um, earlier this year you know, like two weeks ago, uh, everyone was saying that, oh, Facebook is in decline. Well, let's take a look and see what's happening. To me, this chart looks like it's still going up. And so what you're looking at is a quarterly chart begins in the fourth quarter of 2011, where Facebook had 483 million users, and it's steadily grown to today 757 these are daily active users. These are people who are logging in every day. The different colors, if you can't read it, represent the different parts of the world. So the United States went from 126 to 147 million daily users. We went, uh, we go through the U.S. and Canada, then we have Europe, then we have Asia, and then we have the rest of the world. So the amazing thing is the rest of the world may not have toothbrushes or fresh water, but they have Facebook accounts. So you have 757 million active people, or to put it in perspective for us, 147 million active daily users are logging in to Facebook. Uh, monthly users, again, same kind of growth pattern, same growth throughout the world. So um, we know that the, the users are there. Maybe it's tapering off a bit, but that's to be expected. It looks like Facebook is going to be with us for a while, and uh, we'll continue to be the platform the vast majority of people choose to, to log into. The, uh, the real growth that we're seeing, in one quarter, they had an 8% growth in mobile daily active users. And like I tried to cover last week, and I will be stressing all year long, you need to be that truly mobile agent. And just having a smartphone or getting email to your phone may not be the end all. If you're not using your phone for cool stuff, uh, yesterday did a presentation and we created a video on my smartphone for a builder right in front of him. And it was fun to be in the room and feel the attitude about the whole process change with a really simple demonstration. At least that's the way it seemed to me. And the great thing is you have such powerful tools in your hands or in your pocket every day as you walk around. And if you're not utilizing it, uh, you're paying too much for your phone. Why have a smartphone if all you're going to do is take calls, send texts, and maybe receive email? And I've met with plenty of you that I haven't had an email on my phone in a month. I don't know what's wrong with it. I would have a severe panic attack at that point if it went on. Well, if it went on for a month, I don't know what I'd be doing. I'd be buying a new phone. 
But typically it's a simple setup and a simple change. And, you know, the world expects you to be connected to them. So when a text comes in, you need to respond. When an email comes in, you need to see it and respond. You don't need to be out there 24 hours a day. However, you have some consumers that would expect that of you. So you're going to pick that battle and what do you truly want to do? How mobile do you want to be? But what if it was a time-saving device and saved you a lot of time and energy and running around or money in marketing or all of the above? And it has that ability. And those are the things I'm trying to bring to you. So we're seeing that mobile usage is steadily climbing up 8% in a month. We see that the mobile active users on a monthly basis also trending up. And again, that mirrors the daily users up 8%. The, uh, the one where the world is catching on is this one here, and this is revenue. And you'll see a tremendous revenue jump, uh, again, from, one, uh, from 11 to 12 to 13. But in one year, their revenues are up 63%. The world is catching on. This is where uh, the eyeballs have gone. So are you late to Facebook? No. Are you considering adding a page? You absolutely should. Um, is spending money to advertise and promote your, uh, your placement, is that going to be the wise strategy for you? Well, you're going to have to make that decision. That's a business decision for you. Uh, Facebook is kind of backing you in a corner uh, with some of the things that go on with your business page in uh, trying to promote them. Of course, they're they're sending you notices today that you have a post that's performing well, and it's something that you should consider boosting the performance, which means pay to get it in front of your audience. Um, whether you're aware of it or not, Facebook has throttled back the number of people that will see your post. They do it on purpose. They want you to spend money with them. They are a publicly traded company. They need to turn a profit. They need to show these kind of growth numbers. and. Um, I mean, it's hard to beat that kind of growth in a year, 63%. Every company would love to see that in revenue in a year. Um, and that's not truly sustainable at those rates, but at the moment, there are so many people that haven't jumped on. So I'm going to show you a couple ideas, maybe ways that you could build your audience, build your traffic, not spend any money. You know I like free, and that's what we're going to look at today. So... Um, I just wanted to let you know that, no, it's not too late. No, Facebook is not over, at least not by these numbers. Maybe the analysts aren't, aren't thrilled that want to see them growing by leaps and bounds. But the trend is still going up. It hasn't plateaued and it hasn't turned the corner and started going down, uh, which would have been my guess from things I was reading earlier, which is why you're seeing this information today. So let's take a little bit of a look at Facebook, for those of you that are considering joining in, uh, that are looking for why isn't this working better, uh, what do I need to do to do things differently? So uh, we'll take a look at my home page here. This is my personal home page. I know I've had a number of questions lately. Is it necessary to have a business page? Can I just have a home page? And the answer is, of course, yes. Uh, I think it's all good. I certainly think you want both. And I'm going to share with you a couple techniques to help you get through your day to build your audience, build some traffic, and uh, maybe give you some quick ideas on things you can share. So um, you're looking at my home page. I just changed this, uh, what's called your cover image, your large billboard up here. Uh, I changed that earlier this week just for fun because I came across the image and I thought it would be fun. It's my subtle reminder to everybody that follows me that, hey, guess what? John's in real estate, and he works for Jack Gaunt. And you can do that quite simply with just a change of an image, and that brings <coughs> in some engagement and response. The other thing that I'm doing <coughs> pretty much on a, a consistent basis right now is checking in and letting the world know where I am and what I'm doing. And this is probably my favorite strategy right now for Facebook. Uh, check in, maybe not everywhere, but 
check in sometime during the day and show a variety of what it is that you do. And I don't mean lunch at Bob Evans or, you know, breakfast at the diner, although that could be a fun thing to do occasionally. Uh, but what I'm looking to do is show you that I'm having a variety of appointments and the variety of things that I do throughout my week. So um, yesterday we had a meeting with the builder. I wanted to check in from that location because I want to build up a little momentum for this particular builder and also for a community because that's what we're working on. Uh, the day before, I was, um, I'm sorry, earlier in the day, I was doing our company orientation program. And once again, wanted to share that, that here I am and we're working with new agents and, and orientating them for our company. There's nothing wrong with sharing something from your business page. And so many of you know that I carry my business page. Uh, I operate under the Realty Chef. So I get to do um, a weird combination of things over there. Um, it's become a very foodie-oriented page, which was my goal. But uh, when you talk about followers all over the world, I have followers all over the world. Fascinating to me, the people that connect with this page. But, you know, how about a cute little article on, are you ready for printed food? We have 3D printers right now that are creating food. It's straight out of the Jetsons. And I thought that was a great article to share on my Realty Chef page, and then I shared it over to my personal page. So two clicks, a couple words, and off you go. You found some content for your page, and you brought it from your business page. So if you're stuck on what should I do, uh, or is it, pers is it pertinent for my personal page, should it be on my business page, the more real estate related it is, I would say I would originate that on your business page and then share it onto your personal page. People will see it here and then work their way back to your business page. Your business page can have a little bit of a different texture to it than your personal page, simply because it's going to be more business, more real estate, uh, probably less birthday party pictures, things like that but you start to get the idea of how you can segment the two, but also merge them together by simply sharing from one page to the other. And uh, you'll find that um, you get lots of engagement. I have 10 people liked uh, my cover page, a couple comments. And um, for those of you that were around when Lois retired, Dave Drobnock made this cute little house out of money as a going away gift for Lois, and Lois chimed in, hey, I recognize that app. So um, you've got a lot of people watching your moves. You won't see much engagement with them, but they are watching what you're doing. Um, once again, you know, we had here, I was in uh, Carlisle meeting with Ian on a cool idea that we're going to be bringing to you. I hope you stay tuned and, and support that. Uh, we're brainstorming a new online venture that's going to be rather cool. Uh, it was Ian's idea, and um, I'm helping provide some tech support and my background in doing all this stuff, and I have access to more tools. How about you showing office space for rental? They would allow filming there because it was such a Our um, local board of realtors decided to have a, um, a cash mob and we did a cash mob event in Lebanon County. We had a new microbrew open in Lebanon, and we had 20, between 25 and 30 agents show up one afternoon just to have a beer, have a little food, support a local uh, business, and give our, um, our local association a nice PR opportunity. So you can kind of format and wedge anything into this that you want. And it just goes on and on and on, and of course, you can't beat sharing pictures of little girls with mustaches. Um, it gets a huge response, and I'm working my way through all my grandchildren. Really, really makes the movie look better. And so a couple things for you to remember. Park, well, Always make sure that your page, whether it's your personal page or your business page, is branded with the fact that you're a real estate agent. At any time, a real estate conversation could break out, and the consumers always need notice that they're talking with a real estate agent. So um, 
whether you like it or not, it's one of the rules of the Real Estate Commission. We want you to be in compliance, and anything that I'm ever going to bring to you, I'm going to stress that point so I can at least say you knew better. But you do need to make sure that you're a Real Estate Commission compliant to the best that you can, and the Commission's uh, most recent ruling or tip is you need to be one click away. So you can be one click away to learn about me and Jack on Realtor and know that I'm a real estate broker and I have my office number right along with my direct dial and then I can have my mobile phone and any other combination of, of um, website and email address that you think is appropriate. But make sure that contact information is in there so they know who they're talking to and who they're dealing with. We don't need those aggravations, and you know if you have a busy page, if you become popular, your competition's going to be looking at it and say, wait a minute, what's wrong with this picture? You know, are they, are they playing fairly? And the same thing is going to be true for your business page. Make sure when they get to your business page that the same thing is true that they can see that you're in real estate, the location of your office. Here you have more control and more field that you can complete. And so make it a business card. You can locate your business, add in a phone number, add in its location. And the thing that you may or may not realize about this, everything that we're doing is building up your Google placement. So if somebody is nearby, and they're searching what's nearby, you can become a business location through your Facebook About section that you may be the only agent that pops up that's actually registered themselves to a particular location. And with the smartphone tools that people have right now, the focus on mobile that every platform has, because they all want to find you, follow you, reach out and touch you. Um, Having this information in here is critical because when they Google something, nearby real estate agent, what if you popped up and it tied you in to your office location and your office location was a Google Place registered landmark, which it should be. Uh, we did that exercise several years ago. You may be the only agent that shows up in that list. Here's an active agent. And Google's going to be weighing in on all of these fronts. So tie your profile together in a consistent format. You've all heard me say that before, but these are some of the reasons we do that. We want Google to be able to find you because if Google's looking for you, it's because somebody is searching for something that you do. So make sure that those things are all in place, that they have the ability to find you, reach out to you with one touch, be dialing your phone number. So these things need to be out there, and it's critically important. Bright colored lead based paint. We had no childproof lids or locks on medicine bottles, doors, or cabinets. And when we rode our bikes, we had no helmets. We drank water. From to our unmute door, your line, from press bottle. star six or pound six. Somebody, so they've got their TV on or something. We'll take a second and just cancel you all out here. There, that's better. So, um, I don't need the competition. So make sure that you've branded yourself, that you've, that you've uh, made yourself compliant as much as possible with the Real Estate Commission. Again, we just don't need that aggravation. And then again, you want to make sure that you're following, that your page gives everyone an essence of what it is that you do, that you're into real estate, but also some of your personal interests as you go along. It's okay to share this. I wouldn't say to overshare it. I had a great bowl of oatmeal. Nobody really cares but they will care about your opinion about the market. They will care about your activity. And these activities absolutely lead to private messages that people are looking for questions, answers. Uh, I just had a referral call again this week from someone I'm com connected through through Facebook. I know many of you know that towards the end of last year, I had a, a good run there for a couple weeks where within 60 days, I'm starting to post more and more of where I am, what I'm showing properties, um, that they all led to new business opportunities. So it's another spinning plate for you. It's another source of business. It is the today's duty calls. And make sure you're taking advantage of it and know you're not too late. 
there's tremendous opportunity, whether it's through Facebook, uh, the number two platform these days for user engagement that converts to real business is Pinterest. So if you're already playing on Pinterest, start creating some pages that um, might talk about the real estate in your area, not so much just your new listing, but how about the architecture of the area? Um, like I said in Waynesboro the other day, what about the parks? You've got cute little parks. They're all covered in snow. They all look pretty cute. They'd be great things to take some seasonal pictures and just build up that repertoire. And so let's say you have a relocation buyer. And um, what are some of the things that this area has to offer? Well, how about some seasonal pictures of Shank Park or whatever park is nearby so they can look in and get a sense of what that lifestyle, that quality of life, what's nearby. And then you can start to leverage those things by connecting them all together and uh, perhaps blend them into some video, which we're going to be covering at length over the next couple of weeks. Um, I'll show you the moves to get in and around uh, YouTube. We'll be working on some apps early in the week on my app of the week that are going to show you some video apps, some editing apps, text editing apps. I'm, I'm, on, uh, I'm on the tele call. So you can um, determine just what suits your style and what would you do. And I want to make sure that you're up to speed with these things, that you have access to them. There are so many moving parts to everything I do and that you can take advantage of and your consumers are using and they're enjoying and they will respond to it. So we want to integrate more of these things as you go along and build your ripple in the world that leads to Google finding. That there, you're going to have Google rankings and ratings uh, in, in areas that maybe you just never considered important before. My hope for you is that uh, when people search for you, that they're finding you. Uh, I have some tough competition out there with the NFL. And I, when I go into um, just a simple Google search, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm losing out, but I am fighting hard to keep up with John Tice, the uh, pro football player. Uh, he's out there with images, and guess who's right beside him? Me. Uh, I don't really have the draw that the NFL does, but with Google I do, because you're going to find here, if you did a Google search for John Tice, you'll find my Jack Gone profile. That is tied into everything that I do. What's right behind it? Facebook. Why? Because it has a lot of traffic. What comes in behind that? How about LinkedIn? How about Twitter? So this is the front page of, of Google. I'm on it several times. Even though that um, John is a, an AFL football coach, went on to be a Hall of Fame um, player. Got Mike Tice. We got a bunch of Tices out there. Tices are very popular, apparently. And uh, I'm also beating out JohnTice.com who's a photographer, and he's had that name for a number of years. So it is possible to dominate the front page using no dollars, nothing but your spare time, using a lot of free tools, and you tie them together, set them up properly, and it will make your business go. And you've got people that are following you guys. They are watching what you're doing. So share some stuff and give them a sense of what it's like, what's a day in the life of. You don't have to show any private information if you don't want to. Uh, for safety's sake, particularly for the ladies, if you're going to be out there and you're going to post that I'm at this particular property, no one says you have to do it the moment you show up. How about the moment before you drive away so that there's no safety concern that somebody just doesn't show up um, and surprise you while you're at the property taking photographs or whatever you're doing. So, you know, let's be safety conscious here, too. The world's a very weird place at times for um, for agents, particularly the ladies. So keep that in mind. But you want to give them a sense of what you do on a daily basis. Make sure that you're adding photos. By the way, the tool that I'm using to share my locations is Foursquare. 
And if you're not a four square, uh, excuse me, if you're not a four square user, that might be a different one for you. But the thing I love about Foursquare, whatever I posted here, whatever I posted to Foursquare, I share it to my Foursquare network. It shares it to my Facebook personal page, and it also shares it to Twitter. So you will find that I, I blend in a little bit of uh, Twitter ease here, some of the syntax that makes it searchable on Twitter, because I want that audience to also know what I'm up to and you'll see that those posts are exactly the same. Here I met with the builder, here I'm doing orientation, here we're brainstorming. So it's all the same across all the networks. And there's a synergy to doing this that converts to Google. So why is Twitter and Facebook and John Tice all appearing on the front page of Google? Simply because of techniques like this. Google reads everything you do. It ranks you based on this, and it's going to give you some muscle on a Google page. So you can always get a little, a little more clever at crafting these messages, showing new homes in Hershey today. So if someone's searching Google for new homes in Hershey, well, here's this guy that is doing, saying new home in Hershey across three incredibly busy networks, Google's going to love that. And it will build up some traction for you over time. So make sure that you're taking advantage of um, leveraging whatever you do. You're already out there doing it. Take the 10 seconds, take a picture of the sign, blend it in there. And let's see what Google came up with, because there we go. We had the builder sign took a, a quick picture and just blended that right in. So there's a lot of muscle that you can get out of these types of sharing. So take advantage of the system and, and kind of beat them at their own game in using these pieces. It's amazing to me the leverage and the mileage that you can get out of a free tool. And don't forget, your world is tuning in in record numbers on a mobile platform. So whatever it is that you do, make sure you're mobile ready. Is your website mobile compliant? Is it responsive to them? Uh, you want to ask your programmer, do I, have the, I, do I have responsive design built into my website? Which means it's going to respond based on the platform that you're logging in from. What's the easiest test? Bring it up on your phone and take a look at it and make sure that it's responsive, that you can read it that the fonts are large enough, that it's simple enough. If you have to scroll up and down or if it doesn't fit on one page, that is not responsive design. So it doesn't have to be a totally different page. There are just simple ways to build it that it looks good on any device. We're going to be covering this at length when it comes to YouTube because they have a new cover, uh, cover photo format and they give you all the rules, the best way to optimize a picture where does your data have to live because of the way their responsive design is built? It doesn't squish that picture. It actually just shows pieces of it. So um, we'll be covering those things because we want you looking good out there. If you're going to put the effort in, let's look good and let's make it something that when a consumer finds it, that it works for them. So Facebook's not dead. Social media is far from over. It's time, guys, to embrace it a little bit to uh, put your toe in the water, jump in with both feet, whatever you choose to do. But yes, the time to do it is now. And uh, the beautiful thing, Facebook's already mobile optimized. That's why they're making the money. For the last year, year and a half since they've gone public, they have been focused on building their mobile presence because they knew that's where their ad revenues had to come from and apparently it's working. The eyeballs are there. The advertisers are there. Probably some of the only people that aren't there are you. It's time to engage, time to take your business to another level for this year so that you can leverage everything that's taking place. So, um, guys, that's my story for the day. 
I hope you find these helpful. I appreciate everybody logging in, dialing in, and watching the replays. So join me again. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week. Enjoy the heat wave that's coming. Uh, you might be able to lighten up and lose that sweater or something else. But um, if you're showing those vacant houses, just remember, they aren't going to warm up for weeks. So um, have a great day. Get out and sell something. And um, find me online. Like my page. I will like you back. And I'll be sharing some tips and things just like this article that I find that um, I think are agent appropriate through my private agent channel. So send me a like and um, see you online. Thanks very much. Have a great day, and I appreciate your dropping by.